technologies that reach farmers over time. Here is a generalization of some of the things that are in the pipeline. We have uh, a number of uh, solutions that are quite advanced in the development stage. You can see hybrids, for example, or a new generation of uh, uh, stress tolerant varieties, conservation agriculture, uh, other economy solutions like site specific nutrient management, where we really want to uh, accelerate the uptake, the dissemination, getting it out to farmers uh, through more efficient public and private sector channels. But at the same time, uh, we need to invest in this program in the new generation of technologies that may have an impact 10 years from now or only 20 years from now. And you can see some of those listed that we expect to come, become available or become more important over time so that we can then keep up the targeted uh, productivity and efficiency improvements that we need to achieve. If we are able to do this, our preliminary assessment uh, suggests that the investment in such a program would have a high rate of return. So, if we assume that uh, over a 25 per year period we invest in R&D at the level that we have suggested, which would uh, add up to about $3 billion over 25 years, then by the, by the year 2035 uh, we would have a significant reduction in net rise prices compared to not investing in R&D. We would have uh, lifted uh, at least 150 million people out of poverty. Or in other words, the cost of lifting one person out of poverty through the investment in rice R&D of this global program is $20 per person. So it has also significant impacts on reducing hunger and uh, improving uh, health and nutrition. Uh, and we're hoping to have a uh, significant impact also on reducing externalities or negative environmental impacts uh, and uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So this is the potential that a program like this has. It can only be realized if research is more focused, if research is better aligned, if it avoids uh, duplication, needless competition, and instead of that is based on synergies. And that's where the different partners will play a significant role. And uh, I think in this process uh, we have already identified about many of these roles. But this is not finished. We need to continue the dialogue with many partners to find a role for everyone. To, in addition to contributing to your own countries, to your own institutions, or even to your personal <coughs> research interests, hook up with the global rice community, rice research community, become part of the global program and then therefore also make a contribution in other countries and other parts of the world. Uh, we're in the process of uh, setting up a basic website, uh, but uh, those of you who wish to download the entire uh, full document of over 200 pages, uh, you can go to this website and download it right there. I will stop here and I'd like to give an opportunity to each of my colleagues to say a few words, to give a different perspective to this and maybe we start uh, with the consultant board chair, Carlos Perez de Castillo. Thank you very much, Akim, for, for this very comprehensive introduction. And uh, thanks for the opportunity of expressing some views from the consortium board uh, on how we see the launching of, of this important program. First of all, I would like to say that I have been a witness during the course of this year of the tremendous effort that uh, IRI, Africa Rice and, and CIEF have put forward in order to improve the contents of the program to meet the criteria that was, um, that was set up, um, the high quality criteria that was set up in order to, to get this approved. And, um, and the number of hours and efforts that were dedicated in consultation with hundreds of stakeholders in order to, to incorporate into that project the views of all concerned. 
and, uh, and we were very happy in the consortium board to be able to approve that program, to send it to the, to the fund council, and as you know, the fund council approved it uh, last week, and is now ready uh, for, uh, for financing it. Um, my first comment would be to, to highlight that we feel that this the development of Greece has given a, a great impulse to the reform process in the CGIR. Uh, international agricultural research has always played a, a key role and will continue to play a key role in, in contributing to increase the food production in the world to meet the growing demands of a, of a growing population and as such to have an impact on, on, on hunger and poverty. But now, uh, and, and as I mentioned, this is a role that International Reserve will, will, will continue to fulfill. But at, the, but at present, there are a number of new challenges that have, that have been incorporated into, into the agenda and that will have to be taken care of uh, in, in the formulation of research programs in the future. Most of these challenges have been the subject of, of discussions over the last few days. But let me just enumerate them because they are important. One, one of these challenges is the commodity price crisis. We had one in 2008, we may have another one soon, but I think that international research has to be conscious that the impact that, that, that these commodity prices may have, on the one hand, on producers and on the other hand on consumers, have to be taken into account. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, something that many times has not been incorporated. The second crisis that, uh, that we are facing is the resource, the, the, the natural resource crisis. We know that we live in a world in which we, we, we have to produce more with less water, with le land degradation, depletion of fish stocks, deforestation, and all these, all these aspects will have to be incorporated into any research program for the future. Then we have the energy crisis. And the energy crisis, not only because it contributes to increasing the, the, the inputs, the agricultural inputs that are used for rice production of other crops, but we also have that link with biofuel. And, uh, and, and, and biofuels is also linked with both food security, and all these things uh, have also to be taken into account. Finally, we have climate change, which uh, I think has, has already mentioned mitigation, adaptation, adaptation, emission of, 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 of greenhouse, and the changes in, ecosy in ecosystems. And the final crisis that we are facing is a financial global crisis, which means that there will be less resources perhaps uh, to, uh, for development in general, and let's hope that it will not affect uh, research. But also there will be a much greater loop from dollars uh, into the money that put in into international agricultural research in order to, to make sure that the results are there. And as a result of all these challenges, I think that research could not continue as business as usual. And, uh, and, uh, and the new approaches have to make sure that the research is much more strategic, strategic uh, it's much more focused, it's much more collaborative in between, uh, between actors and is driven by, by partnerships and, and by innovation. And I think that the merits of CRISP is that it, that it, that it follows that pattern. And, and without going into details, I think that what CRISP ha has done is on, on, on the one hand introduce a number of innovations. Firstly, by working together with other centers specializing in, in, in rice research rather than going it alone. Uh, it has value the collective actions. Uh, it has value uh, the, the contributions that other centers can do and the, synergy, the synergies that, that can be created. Secondly, I think that RIS has been able to, to address all the problems in a holistic manner. We have seen that they are not only working on crop, on, on, uh, on crop genetic improvement, but they, they're dealing with production systems, with agricultural practices, with capacity building, with harvest losses, with uh, with gender, with the value chain, with market, with technology. And, um, and I think that, that this is a, a, a very important component of, of this new program. Uh, the, the third thing is that they have done a, 
they have done it in partnership with, you mentioned 900, uh, 900 uh, partners have, have been involved into, into this process. And I think that this is essential if we want to, 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 uh, to make sure that the impact at the end of the, at the, end of the day will be there. And finally, they, they have shown a clear impact pathway. I think this, this quiz shows outputs, outcomes, and eventually it projects these outcomes into the future and the impact that they can have on poverty alleviation, world food security, and, um, and in, in environmental uh, sustainability. So I think that the implementation of, of, of GRIS will provide very good lessons for the development of other, uh, of other uh, CRPs that are now uh, being developed. And, uh, and it will also uh, allow us to better define the interactions among the different CRPs and the boundaries. Um, it has been an extraordinary and, and creative process, which I think has brought uh, many benefits to all of us, and I can tell you that it has certainly set up the bar very high for the other CRPs that are, that are now looking for being uh, implemented and approved by the consortium board. So, my congratulations to to Yiri, to CF, and to Africa Rice for for a job well done, and uh, and uh, and I wish you success in the implementation.